Joining me on the broadcast is Vyond's sports editor, Digvijay Singh Dev. He joins me from the Vyond newsroom. What a day, Diggy, for Indian sport. Yes, uh, we're calling it Super Sunday. And uh, I, I just was trying to remember when was the last time we did a sports <laughs> at 6 in the evening. But that just shows what a day it's been. And I think we need to first talk about the women's table tennis team because... Singapore have been the most dominant force in table tennis at the Commonwealth Games ever since uh, 2002 when table tennis was introduced at these games. They have won every single gold medal barring this one. Right. That puts to light what this team has achieved today. And I think credit must go to Manika Batra. She's ranked 58 in the world, Raghavendra. And she beat the world number four. It's a huge upset. And that set the tone for the Indian team. And uh, even though Mad Madhurika Patkar lost, Madhurika Patkar and Mohamed Das ended up winning the uh, doubles match. And then Batra came and sealed it. It's a huge, huge win for Indian table tennis. Simply because while you go to the Asian Games, where you have the Chinese who are the most dominant team in the world, the Indian players struggle. But this is something which they will remember for the rest of their lives. And that's why we're calling it a historic achievement. And this table tennis victory, uh, Big Vijay, uh, it's, it's completely unexpected, isn't it? Yes, I must say I was, I was really, really uh, taken aback. Uh, we did expect the Indian team to actually win a medal, reach the medal rounds, but they've been very dominant. Uh, they won almost all their matches beat in the pool phases or in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. They've, they've had a couple of matches which have gone the distance, but they've by and large won by 3-1 or by 3-0 margins. And, and to, to pull off that 3-1 margin against Singapore says a lot. Clearly, the Indian team wanted it much more. They're much more confident. And, and they didn't get overawed by the reputation of of Singapore. You know, uh, earlier on on the show uh, at 3.30 when we had our experts coming in, they were talking about the aura of, of some great teams. You know, a lot of players, when you play great teams, you tend to think that, oh, can I win against this team? This team was not intimidated by Singapore, who have won this gold medal four games in a row. Absolutely. And uh, coming to Manu Bhakar, you've covered sports for so long. How often uh, does one see a 16-year-old uh, scale such a peak? Well, I've seen 16, 17-year-olds winning junior World Cups, uh, winning junior World Championships. But to have uh, a, a Commonwealth Games champion at 16 is incredible, Raghavendra. It just goes to show the depth in Indian shooting. It just goes to show that all the hard work done by the likes of Anjali Bhagwat, Gagan Narang, Suma Shirur, Manavjit Sandhu, Ranjan Sodi, uh, and it's now Abhinav Bindra. Is all, you know, it's all coming together now. Here you have a new breed of champions emerging who aren't getting into competition, who aren't going to play their first tournaments thinking, I'm going to participate for India. They're right. going and saying, we can win. And that is the great news coming out uh, this year, especially Manu Bhakar, six gold medal in a month and a half. Absolutely. And not to forget the weightlifting contingent, uh, they are on a roll. Absolutely. Weightlifting used to dominate uh, Commonwealth Games 2002, 2006. Then the sport got hit uh, with a lot of dope scandals as a result of which the, the confidence took a beating. But we saw three gold medals at, uh, at the last Commonwealth Games as well. This time they've already got five. They, in fact, they've bettered their tally. And uh, I think Mirabai Chanu set it up by winning that world championship in 2017. She became world champion for India after a very long time in the sport. And she started this Indian uh, gold rush in weightlifting on the first day and the others haven't looked back. The overall medal count in weightlifting is pretty high now and a lot of other teams like shooting, badminton, wrestling will keep an eye on that because everybody wants to finish up with the most number of medals for India but the weightlifters have shown the way. Beating five gold medals, I can tell you, is no tough task. I think uh, last time in Glasgow, wrestling also got five, shooting won four. So the weightlifters have set the bar very high. Yeah, and it seems to be a gold rush for India at Gold Coast so far. Uh, what are the event, other events to watch out for, Digvijay? Where else could India win uh, goals? Well, I can tell you that there are already two medals assured uh, in uh, sports which happened today. MC Mericom, uh, the legend of Indian sport, Olympic medalist, five-time world championship gold medalist, she has assured herself of a medal at these games. She's qualified for the semi-finals of the women's 48 kg. Badminton India are the top seeds in the mixed event. They play the second seeds Malaysia tomorrow morning. There's also gold medals expected from Indian uh, pistol king Jitu Rai in the 10-meter air pistol. That's the first event uh, at the final is at 7 7.30 Indian uh, Standard Time tomorrow morning. There's also Apurvi Chandela and Mehuli Ghosh in the women's air rifle. Apurvi Chandela is defending her gold medal. So you could have a lot of gold medals coming in tomorrow. The way India has started now, 
with all these gold medals, I have a, I, I get the feeling now that we will go past that 15 gold barrier which we had last time. In Delhi games, which were the home games, we won 32 gold medals. Right. But I now have a feeling we will significantly cross that uh, gold mark of 15 which we set at Glasgow. Absolutely, and the Indian contingent would indeed be hoping to cross that uh, benchmark of 32 goals which they had when the CWG happened in Delhi. Thank you so much, Digvijay Singh Dev, for joining us with those updates and perspectives. <laughs>